can see question one we have a particle fired with an initial velocity u at an angle a to the horizontal and the incline is at an angle b to the horizontal so we have a b in here and an a minus b in here so our initial vector is going to be u cos a minus b in the i direction plus u sine a minus b in the j direction our accelerations in the i direction it's going to be minus g sine b and in the j direction minus g cos b and we are looking for <coughs> if the particle strikes the plane at p at right angles show that the time here is 2u sine a minus b over g cos b and then deduce the following so let's set up our equations here <coughs> we need to know the time taken of flight when is s of y equal to zero ut plus a half at squared is equal to zero so u sine a minus b times t minus g cos b by t squared and the half you put it over two to tidy it up when is this equal to zero factor out your t you're left with u sine a minus b minus g cos b times t over two equals zero so my initial t is equal to zero or u sine a minus b would be equal to g cos b times t so if you just leave the t there bring the g cos b underneath and the 2 will be underneath we'll end up multiplying here we end up with the time 2u sine a minus b over g cos b which is what they wanted then we're asked to deduce the 2 tan a minus b times tan b is equal to 1 it goes back to the question here the particle strikes the plane at right angles to p so what we know about right angles when it's hitting at right angles this velocity in the x direction will be equal to zero there's only j going on up and down here so at the moment it strikes the plane at right angles that's when s of y is equal to zero we've taken we've got the time taken to get there so now we need to write the velocity of x and sub time in so let's look at the velocity of x u plus a t so the velocity of x is u cos a minus b minus the acceleration g sine b times t which is this 2u sine a minus b over g cos b so that's equal to zero and you can see the emergence now of tan we've got sine b over cos b which is tan b so if we want to get tan b if we divide by u cos a minus b we get a one here and u cos a minus b here will give us tan a minus b so we end up with one minus tan b times two so I'll put the two in front and then sine sorry tan a minus b and that's all equal to zero so therefore two tan b or tan a minus b by tan b is equal to one which is what they're looking for up above and then you're told if a minus b is pi over four find in terms of u and g the range of the projectile so a minus b is equal to pi over 4 so that's 45 degrees so the tan of 45 is equal to 1 so we have 2 times 1 times the tan of b is equal to 1 so the tan of b is equal to 1 over 2 and let's get the cos of b and the sine of b b opposite over adjacent so root 5 so cos b is equal to 2 over root 5 and sine b 
is equal to 1 over root 5. We also have the angle A minus B, and we know that the tan of A minus B is equal to 1, because the tan of 45 is equal to 1, so I have A minus B opposite and adjacent, so I'll have a root 2. So the cos of A minus B is equal to 1 over root 2, and the sine of A minus B is also equal to 1 over root 2. So now we are looking to find the range. So the range S of X is equal to UT plus a half AT squared. My initial velocity in the X direction from above, just seek it out there, U cos A minus B. U cos A minus B times t minus the acceleration g sine b just double check minus g sine b g sine b by t squared over 2 so this is what the range is now we have some things we can simplify we have time and we have time in this format up here 2u sine a minus b over g cos b 2u sine a minus b over g cos b so we can simplify time here and then sub that in as well so 2u by the sine of a minus b which is 1 over root 2 divided by g cos b which is g by the cos of b, which is 2 over root 5. So turning that fraction upside down and multiplying, it's going to end up with root 5 on top here and 2g on the bottom here. The 2s will cancel. I'll just get rid of that fraction there. The 2s will cancel and we'll be left with root 5u on top and root 2g on the bottom. And that's my time. So now subbing all this into S of X, I'm going to get U cos A minus B. So U by 1 over root 2 by T, which is root 5U over root 2G minus G by the sine of B, which is 1 over root 5 times t squared, which is going to be 5u squared over 2g squared, and then divided by 2, so I can just extend that out and put another 2 on the bottom, divided by 2. So how does this tidy up? Root 5u squared over 2g for the first one, and then minus 5u squared over 4 root 5 g and I bring that third away from the bottom by multiplying by root 5 over root 5 I'll get root 5 u squared over 2 g minus 5 root 5 over 5 so it's just going to be root 5 over 4 u squared over 4g and if we make them both over 4g I have to multiply this top and bottom by 2 so I get 2 root 5 u squared over 4g minus 1 root 5 u squared over 4g it's just going to give me root 5 u squared over 4g to be my range